What's up my fellow Orchid Geeks, it's me, Jose Carlos, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be observing, through the lens, Cattleya acklandii, one of the most fragrant, elegant, and waxy Cattleya species. Also known as Lady Ackland's Cattleya, it was named after the wife of Sir Thomas Dyke Ackland, 10th Baronet, who was the first European to successfully cultivate the species. Found in the coastal state of Bahia, Brazil, you can find the species growing inland as much as 62 miles, which is simply mind-blowing. And in the wild, Cattleya acklandii may be found from Salvador, Brazil, and from that point, it extends northeastward of that location, with the largest Cattleya acklandii population being found along the drainage valleys of the Paraguacu River. Commonly called a dwarf Cattleya, this species can grow to a height of 3 to 5 inches or 7 to 12 centimeters and produces 1 to 3 flowers that are large in comparison to the plant's proportion. This compact growing species certainly makes up for its petite size by giving you large waxy flowers that bloom typically in spring, summer, and occasionally fall. So honestly guys, who can complain about that? This species of Cattleya grows near concentrations of water at elevations of 100 to 400 meters and it grows approximately 6 to 10 meters off the ground. You can also find Cattleya acklandii growing in large clumps of tree trunks with vigorous roots that are often covered by wild Tillandsia plants. Now these plants ultimately help Lady Ackland's orchid to survive its dry period in the winter. Now it's time for the big question on everyone's mind. What is the culture for Cattleya acclandii? Well, don't fret you guys, that is why I'm here. So let's keep it clear that the culture for this species varies depending on where you're located as well as what kind of growing methods and media you are using. Since Cattleya acclandii love to dry out in between watering, many people decide to mount these orchids on cork oak or place them in baskets. Now, if you live somewhere very dry where you can make sure that they are going to be getting very good drainage, you can also put them in pots. But many growers do recommend that you mount the species in order to prevent rot. Now, you may also grow Cattleya acclandii in a bright patio or near a window where high light and good airflow is available. In terms of temperature, this species is an intermediate to warm grower, and during the summertime, Cattleya acclandii grows in average temperatures of 82 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, and summer nights of 71 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, with the diurnal range being 11 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, during the winter months, it grows in average temperatures of 77 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, with nights averaging 67 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, with the diurnal range being 9 to 11 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're growing on your patio, you want to bring the plant indoors if the temperatures do get below the temperature of 50 degrees. In terms of humidity, you want to provide Cattleya acclandii with approximately 75 to 85% humidity. And for light, the plant loves the sun. You can grow it in a window with approximately 70% sunlight to have the best growth. Now, you want to be careful to keep the light between 4,000 and 4,500 foot candles because ultimately you want to keep the plant as bright as possible without burning any of the leaves. Because trust me guys, I have seen this before and when the leaves burn, it is not a pretty sight at all. It's like something out of The Walking Dead. Now, like I mentioned before, if you guys are growing in your home, you can definitely grow it next to a window where it can get bright light and good airflow. And I'll talk a little bit more on airflow in just a moment. You can also grow Cattleya acclandii in your patio where it can receive filtered sunlight. It will really appreciate that and I think that growing outside will really give it some very fantastic airflow. Now, if you guys purchase or obtain a species from a nursery or a friend who has been growing it in a shadier or an area with lower light conditions, 
it is important to gradually introduce the plant to bright light. A quick shift in its growing environment may cause the orchid to become stressed out and they may actually cause severe sun damage so you guys need to be careful and I need to tell you from personal experience like I mentioned before that that is not a pretty sight. Now in terms of watering you want to make sure that you allow the plant to dry out in between each watering. If you mount it, you may water it one to three times a day depending on weather and in a pot, you can water it once a week, cutting back watering during the winter months. If you decide to grow Lady Ackland's orchid in a pot, um, you do need to be aware that you might need to water it more than once a week during the summer months if needed and grow in a fast draining media. It is critical that the media fully drains as overwatering Cattleya eclandii is a quick recipe for rot and ain't nobody have time for that you guys. Furthermore, these plants have a dry period in the winter so you never want to let them get too dry and you must continue to water, be it lightly during that period. So don't get the wrong idea and just stop watering your plant completely. Your plant still is going to appreciate some water in the winter time. Now I've been mentioning airflow a lot this past minute and I'm going to tell you guys why. By providing good airflow to your plant, you are helping the plant stay dry in between its watering periods as well as prevent sun damage while your plant is growing in bright light. In addition to protecting your plant's leaves from getting sunburned, it also helps to keep your plant cool as well. Now you want to make sure that you do this especially on really warm summer days just so that your plant doesn't stress out and suddenly begin to lose its leaves. Now you will begin to notice that when you grow with bright light some of your plant's leaves will begin to be spotted and you might think that your plant is sick but don't worry it is perfectly normal for the species to get these beautiful fuchsia deep purple spots on their leaves they're simply gorgeous and i think that they're a nice addition to the overall growing experience because even when it's not blooming you get to see these beautifully spotted leaves on your plant they're, and they're just so fleshy and thick they really are magnificent in terms of fertilizing, you can fertilize your Cattleya eclandii once a week with one quarter to one half of the recommended strength. And fertilizing really depends on the kind of water quality that you have access to. Water that has been treated, you know, by reverse osmosis is going to have different fertilizer requirements than that of, you know, regular tap water. And even then, tap water in different cities might be different. Now for tap water, for the most part, 20-20-20 fertilizer seems to work just fine and be sure to cut back on fertilizing during the winter months as well because during the winter months it's not going to be an active growth but once the spring times comes in and it really takes off, you can resume your regular application. And that is going to conclude our video for today. Thank you everyone for watching me ramble about my favorite Cattleya species. Cattleya eclandii. I really had. <laughs> oh, that's um, that's actually a picture of my cat Chetos. I have no idea how that got in here. No idea. But I guess the world will never know. You know. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, feel free to give that like button a hit and also feel free to subscribe if you are new and also you are more than welcome to share this video to all your friends. But until my next one, you guys, peace.